Welcome everybody. Our big plans for a 18th century cookout this weekend got rained out because we, I don't know how it is where you are, but we have rain, 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 and more rain in the forecast. So we decided we're gonna take advantage of that time. And the last of the peaches, the late peaches, came in here within the last week. So we're gonna make a peach pie because it's been a while since we did a pie. I have, this is a four cup measuring cup. And I always like to use a little bit more than what it calls for because as you cook your pie, your fruit sinks down and then you end up with just a little pie instead of a full piece of pie. So it calls for four cups for a standard pie plate, not a deep dish. If you make it in a deep dish, you're probably gonna want this plus another two cups. But I've got this topped full to the top. We're gonna dump this in this bowl here. And of course, you can peel these however you want. Some people quarter them and peel them with a knife, which is honestly the way I usually do them. You can dip them in scalding water for about 30 to 45 seconds, maybe at the most, then put them into cold water and the skin should peel off. But I just find it just as easy to do it this way. We have two tablespoons of lemon juice we're gonna add to this. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because it helps keep our peaches from going really brown. So we're just gonna give that a quick toss in here. And I went ahead and sliced these up because I don't think you need instruction on how to peel and slice a peach. We're just gonna make sure that we get some lemon juice on, hopefully all of them. Doesn't really take a lot. And that works with apples and even um, some vegetables it'll work with. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little cinnamon and nutmeg. And I prefer my nutmeg to be ground fresh because, I mean, grated fresh. If you grate your nutmeg fresh, the flavor is far superior to anything you can buy that's already pre-ground. Even if you just open it up, this is the way to go. And we're gonna mix our cinnamon, which we have a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. If you like a lot of cinnamon flavor, you can add more. You can add a half a teaspoon. I just prefer to let the peaches be the star in the dish. So I don't put a lot of spices in. And I'm going to put that in my sugar here. And if you watched our, oh, I don't know. I think it may have been the apple, mom's apple cake recipe. I always put my cinnamon and my ground spices in with my sugar or flour so it doesn't turn into little balls, cinnamon balls. It, dis it distributes better. So I'm gonna put a healthy dose of nutmeg in here. And I'm saying probably a good quarter of a teaspoon anyway. Which would probably be about, not quite a quarter of a small nutmeg. We're gonna give this just a little stir in here to get mixed with our sugar. Some people will go ahead and add their flour and their sugar together in here and dump it in the peaches together. I don't because we all know that all fruits are not created equal and some of them are riper and have more juice than others. I prefer to let these macerate. We're just gonna dump this in here and we're gonna give it a quick, a quick mix. I prefer to let these macerate, which means the, the sugar works with the peaches and it draws some of the juice out. And then I can look at the amount of juice that's in there and decide how much flour I wanna add to it because I don't want my pie to be runny, but I also don't want it to be pasty. So once you got this nutmeg and cinnamon and sugar coated on all these peaches, you can just let them sit for a minute and go on to making something else or make your pie crust up. If you wanna roll out your own pie crust and you're just gonna let them sit here, I would say probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it doesn't take long, just enough to see what kind of juice you're gonna get out of them. And then we'll come back and we're gonna add a little bit of flour to it. So we're ready to um, roll our crust out and get our crust in our pan and we're drawing juice over here. We're gonna look at that in a minute. But what we wanna do is we wanna have our crust slightly bigger than our pan. So I take this crust and I lay it here and I just look at how much bigger I am. And I'm close to the right size, but I need to be a little bit bigger because we're gonna make 
a double crusted pie. Actually, we're going to make more of a lattice pie than a double crusted. So we're just going to roll this out just a little bit bigger from the center to the outside. But I always like to get it to where I think it's close. And I like to roll it out on this parchment paper because it kind of gives me a, 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 an easy way to judge when I'm close to both edges of the parchment paper and it looks kind of round. I know I'm kind of close. And every now and again, you might have to pull it up because you're making it bigger so it's wanting to stick to the paper. But I think we're probably good. So we're going to put Grandma's rolling pin aside here. We're going to go ahead and get this one crust into our into our pan. I just put my hand in the center of it, put my pie plate on it, and flip it over. And an oil an oil crust is pretty easy. They're not real tender. They're pretty easy to work with. They don't they don't break easy or tear easily. So you really don't have to be that worried that you're going to mess it up by trying to get it put in this pan. See, I'm a little, I need to move it over this way, just a little. What I'm, what I'm looking for is, you see where my pie plate is underneath there? I want just this little edge so when we put the lattice top on, we can fold this back up over the top. So all I'm doing is just gently making sure that this is down all the way into the bottom of the pan. And just pushing it pushing it in place. Make sure it's down all the way around. And then that's all we're gonna do with that right this second. We're gonna set this over here. We're gonna hand this rolling pin to Gino. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. <laughs> I might get whacked with it. Can you see how much juice our peaches drew? Now this will happen if you put them in the pie first and then bake it, all this juice is still gonna come out of these peaches. Some people would put a pinch of salt in here. I've never found a reason to, and then grandma never did it that way, mom never did it that way, so I don't. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some flour. And I have in this bowl a half a cup of flour. I don't know that I'm gonna use all of it, and I usually don't even measure this, but I'm just doing this so you have a reference. So I'm going to put in about half, so about a quarter of a cup of flour. I'm going to mix this up into my peaches. And I like to use this silicone spatula because it's easy on the peaches. Because we don't want to break all of our peaches up. Now what I'm looking for what I always look for, whether it's a peach pie, a blackberry pie, a, an apple pie, whatever kind of pie, I always look, after I get my flour mixed in, I look at the color of my juice. I want my juice to look kind of flowery. And to me, that doesn't look like it has enough flour in it yet. It still looks mostly like peach juice, like, like you think you might stick your finger in there and taste it and it wouldn't be too disgusting. You want it to look like it's gonna be disgusting if you actually were to taste it, like it's gonna taste like flour. So I'm gonna put almost the rest of that in there. Now if you're using cornstarch, you would only use half as much because cornstarch has twice the thickening power as flour. And I usually don't use cornstarch, so it's kind of hard for me to judge that. I only use cornstarch in my strawberry rhubarb pie. We're pretty close here. This all depends on how much juice you have in your peaches. And to learn how to make the perfect pie, you need to learn to judge how much flour you need. Because if you don't, I'm going to dump the rest of this in there. And I think we're going to be about right. Because your, your peaches aren't always the same ripeness. You're not always going to have the same amount of liquid. And how much liquid you have is what determines how much flour you need. So you cannot always follow a recipe. It's, it's different every single time. Now, you see how that looks kind of pasty? Like you just know if you tasted that, it would taste like flour. And that's 
about how you want it. Okay, I'm gonna grab a slotted spoon and I'm going to take my peaches and put them in my pie shell. Oh, and preheat your oven to 375. You know how long it takes for your oven to preheat, so do that whenever, whenever you think is appropriate because once you get this in the pie shell, you're gonna wanna put it in the oven because these peaches are gonna sit in here while we do our lattice top, which does take a little time. And if you don't wanna do a lattice top, you could put a second crust on here and, and fold it over and crimp the edges and cut a couple of vents in it and it would be fine. If you don't wanna mess with the second crust at all, you can make yourself a crumb topping kind of like on a Dutch apple pie and that's really good. I always add some pecans into it. So if you go with the crumb topping, try adding some pecans or whatever other kind of nut it is that you really like because it really adds a lot of flavor to it. Gets that toasted flavor. If you like almonds, you could use that. Hazelnuts would probably be really, really good, especially with peaches, I would think. It looks like we're probably going to put all of this in here, but what I do is I get my fruit put in here, and you can see you're getting some of the juice in there. I don't want to put too much juice in there, because as this juice cooks, it's going to thicken with the flour, and as it's cooking in the oven, it's going to, it's going to get taller, and I'm probably still going to make a mess, but I try not to make a mess. I try not to overfill. That's okay. So I'm leaving the rest of this in here because I don't believe the pie needs it. Can you, you can see that pie? You see how there's, there's juice all the way around it. There's juice all through that pie and it's almost to the top and we still have all of this juice left over. There's a good no better than a quarter of a cup of juice in there almost a half a cup if we scraped it all down and we don't need that in our pie so we're going to leave that you could cut this with the pizza cutter if you wanted i always find that pizza cutters are a little wobbly so i tend not to use them so i just use a knife you can cut these however big or however small you want them the smaller they are of course the longer it's going to take for you to make your lattice work on your pie. And we just eyeball it and we try to get them all about the same size. We're gonna take our longest strips, our two longest strips, which are in the center. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go there. It's this one. And we're going to go here and then we have our centers now this gets woven if anyone remembers making a, like a woven rug um, when you were in kindergarten it's basically the same way over under over under over under so we're going to go here with one and then we're going to go here with one and see so we're over under over then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to pull this one up and the further you go along, of course, the more pieces you have to move. And then I'm going to put this one there. Oops, what did I just do? Sorry. See, now I'm getting messed up. No, oh, that's right. I'm not messed up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the side because this one needs to be under. And then here, we're under, over, and under. So we need to take this one and lift it up and put one here and put him back down. And the same thing on this side. Each side is exactly the same, so it makes it kind of easy. Now, the only thing I would do is since I do have enough pie dough left, trim this little piece off of here because he'll just burn. I'm going to go ahead here and what we need to do is we need to lift these, the ones that are under, to lift these up and put this here and put them back down and then do the same thing on this side. The ones that are under, we're going to lift up, we're going to lay our piece and then we're going to go back over. Now the only other thing that we want to do is we want to trim off these edges before we fold these over. 
Some people take a little egg wash and put it on here and they don't fold their edges over, which is fine. Some people put egg wash on it and fold their edges over, but I find that if you, if you crimp your edge with your fingers, just like a finger and a thumb crimp, after you fold it, it's fine. But the lattice really isn't that difficult. It just takes a little more time. And if you don't want to mess with it, if you don't, if you want the look of a lattice and it's a quick lattice, you just lay some on this way and then lay the other ones over the top of it. And it's still, it's still like a lattice. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start folding this over. We're just going to take this edge and we're going to go all the way around this pie and we're going to fold it over just to the edge. See our pie shell? I mean our pie plate. We're just going to fold that over. So there's that, fold it over. And then we're just gonna go around and we're, and we're gonna pinch however you wanna do it. Every, every, everybody does theirs different. Everybody, everybody pinches their pie in a different way. So all we're gonna do is just like you do on any pie. And what I do is I take my two fingers and put it here and push down with my thumb. However you find it easier to do, if you wanna do it with a fork, you can do it with a fork. I just find that a fork sometimes pinches through the dough too easy. So all you've got to do is just take a, an egg, a whole egg, and beat it like with a fork. And we're just going to brush over the top of this. The last of the finishing touch is raw sugar. Raw sugar. We take this raw sugar and we just sprinkle along our lattice work. I do this on the top. If I do a double crusted pie, just the same. I always brush the top with some, with an egg wash and I sprinkle the top of it with some raw sugar. It, it just, it, it makes it look pretty. Just wait till it's out of the oven and you'll understand why I don't skip this step. And it makes that crust so good that sugar almost like caramelizes on top of there as it bakes and it's like my favorite part of the pie all right we're gonna pop it in the oven at 375 um not sure exactly how long we'll watch it and we'll time it we'll let you know exactly how long you need to leave it in for everybody's oven bakes different so don't take it as the word of god you'll have to watch your oven and watch your pie Hey everybody, it's time for the taste test. This is my lifelong best friend, John Velotti. He's got his own YouTube channel, John Velotti C3 Mods. If you like cars, and especially Corvettes, you want to check it out, we'll put a link to it in the description. But he's going to do the taste test for us today. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. You need to come to my house and cook this. 